Yo, yo, yo. I hope everybody is enjoying their 4th of July weekend. Today has been a long day today. I was up early, had a lot of stuff to do. So if I slur my words in this video, I am I apologize. I'm just trying to get this out um, and want to talk about a few things regarding the running back position. And NFL Network analysis talked about the running game and DeAndre Swift in general. How much different are the Eagles going to use him from the Lions now to the Philadelphia Eagles? Will it be different? will be relatively the same i got the news here for you and the one thing that howie roseman was set at running back at a certain time um is really going to open your eyes a little bit because we may have not have thought certain things that the eagles really wanted to do before they signed swift so this is really interesting so let's get straight into the news Yo, I hope everyone's having a good day today. So I want to go over some news for the Philadelphia Eagles. A couple of things I definitely want to go over uh, to talk about DeAndre Swift. Okay. Now, as much as I look, the most exciting player that I'm excited to watch out for, especially on this offense, is DeAndre Swift, because I've always wished that this move would have happened in the past. I've always wished to see, you know, what if Swift was behind this offensive line with his elite vision, his change of direction, cutting on a dime with speed at 100%. What he could do in the receiving game is a, is a whole nother thing, too. So there was some news that did come out. Um, and obviously, when we talk about when, when he was with the Lions and what he did pretty much his whole career when healthy. Yeah, I mean, 156 receptions, 205 targets over seven, 7.7 7 yards per catch, which is which is pretty good. Um, I think that if if. Swift it was here is here a lot more years. If he signs an extension, I feel like it's going to be more than that. I just I feel like it. Okay, we have to realize DeAndre Swift is only 24 years old. <laughs> like he is young. You trade a 25 fourth rounder, which is really f peanuts at this point. It's free. I mean, you literally got him for nothing. One point something million dollars to two million dollars uh, for a cap hit this year for DeAndre Swift. So nothing crazy there. Uh, but interesting enough, there was some news about, you know, James Palmer from NFL Network had a lot to say about, um, you know, are the Eagles going to use DeAndre Swift much differently than how Detroit used him? Um, James Palmer did say that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to heavily involve DeAndre Swift in the passing game that he is the focal point of this offense now weird enough James Palmer did say since he you know watched the video um he said that before DeAndre before the Eagles found out DeAndre Swift was available the Philadelphia Eagles were fine with the running back room which I don't understand I know a lot of fans were fine with after I really after the Rashad Penny signing Howie Roseman said they were fine in the running back room which is kind of nuts because I said to myself, how could they be fine with a guy that only played six games last year, Kenneth Gainwell and Boston Scott? It just wasn't enough. They had to add another body, whether it was B. John Robinson, whether it was whoever else was out there, the Derrick Henry rumors at the time, you know, Dalvin Cook at the time, you know, could they make a trade for a running back? You know what I mean? There was always these ideas and I figured that. It was smart for them to add another back to keep four on the roster. Boston Scott will play special teams. And if someone gets hurt, Boston Scott could be used in certain ways as well and comes back because I don't think the Eagles had Kenneth Gainwell. And I think they love Kenneth Gainwell, but I don't think they think it's enough. But I guess they thought it was enough after the Rashad Penny signing, which is which is kind of crazy. I just just, just didn't think it was enough uh, firepower in your backfield. And like, look, the reason why you got Rashad Penny, like I said, he only played five six games. Okay, six hundred thousand dollars for the year with some incentives if he plays well, and if he's one hundred percent healthy, yeah, Rashad Penny is yeah runs between the tackles well, is great in open space, uh, welcomes contact. I mean, he has done enough number on us uh, over the years as well so uh you know Rashad Penny is an A-plus move but he's got to stay healthy it's a big what if when it comes to him and DeAndre Swift as well I think we're you know I think Swift is the lesser of the of the two of Rashad Penny and Swift I, 
think I think Swift is lesser injury prone. Um, but to think the Eagles were actually fine with the running back position after Rashad Penny being signed, ah, that's that's kind of surprising to be honest. At least for me, I was kind of right to say they need to add like one more body, whether it was through the draft or whether it was be a trade or whoever gets released or whoever becomes available. So what James Palmer did say was once the Eagles had their eye open, now this. So what happened was. I think it was the day before the first round of the draft or the day of the first round that they were exploring trades. Um, I think once Swift found out that he wasn't going to be the focal point in Detroit, that's when, yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, And he kind of wanted out. And, um, you know, a lot of rumors with Jameer Gibbs going to the Lions or any other team. And be honest, I think the biggest surprise move of the whole entire draft. I mean, two running backs going top 13, which is kind of nuts, which I didn't expect. I expected B. John Robinson to get drafted early, but Jameer Gibbs, I did not expect to get drafted that early. And I think that was one of the biggest surprises. And you saw the war room and, and how excited the Lions front office was when they drafted him. Yeah, Swift was way out the door by that time. Okay, if they're celebrating that badly swift was already out the door so not only did you bring a philly guy in the philadelphia you brought a georgia bulldog in the philadelphia as well along with many others okay now james palmer thinks that the eagles are going to utilize swift in the passing game a lot more than what the lions did even more Okay, and then really the past year, past two years, uh, Swift was sharing the carries as well. And that kind of, you know, pissed him off a little bit because I think I think at Swift at 100% health is a three down back. I think he will have a thousand yard season with the Philadelphia Eagles if he stays healthy all year. I'm kind of wondering with Brian Johnson what he's going to do with, uh, you know, the distribution of carries and how he's going to use um, all of these pieces that he has right now. You know what I mean? Like there's only so much so much, it's, you know, obviously this is a pass first team. I understand that, but the run game is so important where DeAndre do you know how much pressure DeAndre Swift is going to take off Jalen Hurts? Where the Eagles probably don't have to run any QB sneaks. They don't have to do too much. DeAndre Swift hasn't been with a mobile quarterback his whole career, really, since high school. In high school, he had a mobile quarterback, as mobile as Jalen Hurts or more faster than him. Okay, this is the first time like he's been paired up with like a non, you know, pocket quarterback. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that Jalen Hurts isn't a pocket quarterback, but you know, his bread and butter, he's he is mobile. Okay, we all know this. Um, and this is probably one of the most dangerous tangents in the league when it comes to Hurts and having DeAndre Swift in the backfield, plus Dallas Goddard, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, your offensive line. I mean, it's just insane how much firepower you have with DeAndre Swift's vision, um, seeing things before they happen and just really picking his uh, lanes really nicely um, does a fantastic job. Now, what I'm trying to wonder right now is how they're going to use him. And it seems like James Palmer knows that these running backs are going to be heavily involved in the passing game. Okay. Even though with Miles Sanders have a thousand yards last year, he wasn't heavy in the pass game. Really? He was heavy in the pass game as a rookie with Doug Peterson. Once Nick, once Nick Sirianni came here, uh, they kind of handicapped him a little bit. Cause I think that Miles Sanders was underutilized. I think they could have done a lot more with him, which they didn't. I don't know if it was a trust factor. I don't know what was really going on at the time. But to see that distribution, um, you know, Miles Sanders really had a good first year and a really good last year. You know, the really middle years, he had injuries. He had fumble issues. He had drop issues. So maybe there was a trust factor that kind of fell out from the Philadelphia Eagles and said, you know, Kenneth Gainwell is more trusted in that area of expertise when it comes to the passing game as a running back. And I'm not saying that Kenneth Gainwell is a bad player, but he doesn't have some special skill set. He's just pretty productive as a rotational back. He's never going to be a three down back I think we all know, knew this but I knew that the Eagles really had to add another body this offseason and they did in a really good trade on the third day of the draft they got it done and bringing Swift here is a big deal okay I think this could be probably one of the best running back rooms this year I, I mean you stay healthy good things could happen out of it you know what I mean and you know you have, you have four running backs that have different skill sets and all, defenses have to get prepared for it now so, you know, another thing as well, it made sense what James Palmer did say about DeAndre Swift is Brian Johnson. Now, Brian Johnson hasn't been an offensive coordinator since Florida. 
Okay, but when he was, he had his running backs heavily involved in the passing game. And I think that's kind of showing me now that, you know, even with James Palmer saying that they're going to utilize him more in the passing game than the Lions did is a really good sign, guys. Really good sign. Don't think of Swift as just a running back. Think of him as a, a big, uh, he's more of a threat out there in the passing game and what he could do in open space. Just imagine just a dump off pass to him or just something small. You know what I mean? Like, you know, these receivers are going to are gonna sprout this defense. The offensive line is going to do their job and Swift is going to have all day to run. I mean, he's a a home run hitter this is a home run hitting running back okay he gets a little bit of space he could be gone you know what i mean so you never know what could happen here but i i could see deandre swift going to the double digits with touchdowns i could see them using you know them use, he's a little bit of a bigger back too 24 years old i mean it's not like guys it's not like you know 2017 we picked up Legarrette blunt very very late in the off season okay you're not picking up a 30 year old running back here you're picking up a 24 year old running back with one more year left on his deal and obviously there were talks about an extension there were talks about some things about an extension if you know maybe not now maybe down the road if they really you know I think they need to take advantage if if Swift is healthy this year plays fantastic if they win a Super Bowl or not I think that this team is going to play great regardless I feel like an extension could come to DeAndre Swift and honestly they haven't put money into this running back position in a long time and honestly I would rather spend the money on DeAndre Swift than, than would have spending it on Miles Sanders and that's just the truth okay that just obviously depends on how much you know the eagles are willing to pay and uh it's really it's not even about price it's really about you know cap hits for you know the next few years you know J you know we're not affected by quarterback cap hits we're not affected really by much of anything the eagles have 11 to 12 draft selections in 2024 next year which can really if they hit this draft even next year on top of paying your quarterback you could stretch out this window so far we are in the golden years of the philadelphia eagles right now and i totally believe that okay brian johnson like i said get back to that since i cut myself off um you know got his running backs heavily involved at florida and i think that's what the one thing i just didn't like about steichen too much i'm just nitpicking at this point because i thought steichen was a really good offensive coordinator really other than not running miles sanders you know through the first half of games and five to six games this year which really annoyed me um you know and maybe he got a little bit pass happy at times maybe he ran with jalen hurts way too much at times obviously that bears game was way too much and look what happened you you run a quarterback like that you're gonna get a hurt okay so now there's really no excuse with the running back core that you have right now swift involved rashad penny involved with kenneth gainwell and boston scott there's really no excuse like your quarterback should be very healthy this year taking the pressure off him whether it's the rpo the read option the quarterback sneak whatever you want to do with these running backs i'm telling you they're more they are more than running backs rashad penny is more than just a standard running back deandre swift is way Way better than what he than what he is okay at 100 percent health that man is going to take over the league and it's going to be real scary i'm not even kidding a thousand yard i think he can get over a thousand yards easy this year um so with brian johnson coming to the fold of everything now which really this off season i really wanted brian johnson to stay he had a lot of he had some interviews here and there for some offensive coordinator positions uh but you know staying in philadelphia that relationship with jalen hurts was probably really the biggest thing i really wanted to keep intact as much as our offense is intact and we only lost two players and miles sanders and isaac samalo you were able to really keep the connection between brian johnson but the thing with brian johnson is he doesn't just during the off-season workouts like otas with the meetings after practice brian johnson is so involved with the offense and the defense he will sit in on meetings he will he will get his voice in on offensive line meetings quarterback doesn't matter what position like I like Brian Johnson a lot because he's very involved with every with every you know obviously the offensive positions like he's very involved with everything which is great um you know and that's what he did this past OTAs he was sitting in with the offensive line he was you know really putting his voice out there and I and I, and I really do like that and obviously putting trust in these guys that have trust in his play calling um and Jalen Hurts 
hurts. Um, you know, when there was bad play calling from Shane Steichen, I'd probably say what the Texans game is a good example where, you know, Jalen hurts, you know, got blindsided for that fumble. And then he went to the sideline to Steichen and said, we got to start running the football. We're passing way too much. And these coordinators listened to him. Steichen listened to him. And then they went to win that game. Um, so Brian Johnson and Jalen hurts relationship. Very big here. Uh, but you know, involved with this running back room for Brian Johnson running back the running backs are going to be heavily involved in this passing game and I want that so bad because look at the Super Bowl guys what are the two positions that literally did not produce at all wide receiver three and running backs really all that what did Miles Sanders have seven carries for like in the teens yards I mean I, I mean not even 20 yards I don't even think okay um I think all of our running backs combined only got like 40 to 50 yards I mean it really wasn't much it's just the run game was just and there's nothing wrong with that some so there's going to be some games out there that the run game just doesn't work sometimes your passing game is the more is the bigger strength in games sometimes the running game is more strength in games it just depends it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means, you know, it just means that sometimes things just don't work the way they should in, in games and you find a better solution and a better strength that you're uh, exposing a weakness on somebody's defense with what you have offensively, which is great. So I think Brian Johnson's a big, big focus um, in this offense when it comes to the running backs. So I like DeAndre Swift. Like I said, I've talked about him a million times. My favorite player in this offense, I mean, besides Devontae Smith and Jalen Hurts, um, you know, is definitely seeing DeAndre Swift uh, ball out this year. And I think, you know, I think he's going to have a fantastic year and it's a big what if for it's a big what if for DeAndre Swift it's a big what if for Rashad Penny okay I get it but hearing from James Palmer in that video check it out guys because he said the Eagles were fine at running back they were not going to admit add any more players they were after the Rashad Penny signing they were fine with it they were comfortable which I'm just like what seriously but once DeAndre Swift was available once they heard through the grapevine they called immediately they jumped on it and got something done and literally <laughs> Detroit was so Detroit was so desperate to get rid of him they didn't even give like they gave away a pick in 25 a 25 fourth rounder which is absolutely nothing so they just wanted him to go at that point you know not even try to get like a third you know i'm trying to get like a maybe a fourth or fifth rounder for next year like that two years like a 25 fourth rounder is just insane right now so that's all i really got to say guys i mean i think you know this this there was about james palmer and what he said on nfl network about how you know the lions used him how they, they used him in the passing game and how are the eagles going to change that are they going to keep it relatively the same and from what it sounds like they're going to have him way more involved as more of the focal point of this offense in the running back room but secondly in this passing game which is I think they're going to use him a lot. And because Brian Johnson's here, it's even better. And I think it makes more sense when you put two and two together with Brian Johnson. Johnson has done in the past as an offensive coordinator as well. So I know from you guys, what do you think the Eagles are going to do? Brian Johnson as the offensive coordinator in this offense. Do you think that DeAndre Swift is going to be heavily in the passing game? Or do you think it's not going to be as much? Now, I understand, yes, we do have a passing game with our receivers. I understand that the offense runs runs through Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, and Dallas Goddard, which definitely makes sense. But <laughs> you're running routes with these receivers. They're bringing these defenders downfield. You have an offensive line with good protection, and you have a running back, literally, an open space on a cut of a dime. What he could do with his elite vision, running, I mean, just, just seeing things before they happen, and what Swift can do... <sighs> I don't know. It, it's it's these these defenses need to grab a Bible and pray because <laughs> this this offense is just too much for me to even handle to even talk about. I can I mean, thank God I'm not playing them. Thank God I'm not, I'm I'm not a defensive guy playing playing this offense because 
it's going to keep me on my heels. I don't, I'm not going to know what to expect from this offense. You know, the play action is going to work really well because, they, I mean, everyone's a threat. Not only are these running backs a threat, these receivers, the tight end, the offensive, not they're all threats. But Jalen Hurts and his legs extending plays and DeAndre Swift can go off for passes, man. DeAndre Swift is a receiver. He's a natural catcher, which is which is great. So always got to put that in perspective with this. Uh, we need more production from the running backs in the passing game. We, we need more. You know, even if you want to take some off your receivers and, like, let them block a little bit and use some of these running backs to give them a break. You know, you know what I mean? Like, utilize everything you have, man. It just bothered me in that Super Bowl a little bit. It bothered me at the end of the year. They didn't really, you know what I mean? I just, it just, that, that game bothered me probably the most that the running backs just had, there was just nothing there. You know, so that's all I really got to say. I want to know what you guys think. How are the Eagles going to use um, DeAndre Swift? Let me know in the comment section below. If you last this long in this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video. Um, really does help support the channel, and uh, we'll have more updates for you guys. We have less than a month away till Eagles training camp, and, um, you know, Agent Zero is here to stay um, for this year, and can't wait to see him entertain us all year long i'm very excited for it so you guys enjoy the rest of your day i'll see you guys on the next one shakes what up follow side peace out guys peace